Welcome to Unit 17, video number 5. This is the final video in the acid-base unit, Unit 17. In this video, we're going to talk about pH. By the end of this video, you should understand how pH indicates relative acidity or basicity. You should be able to recognize how acids and bases differ in terms of relative concentrations of H plus and OH minus. You should be able to calculate H plus concentration and OH minus ca concentration from pH and from pOH, and vice versa. You should be able to calculate pH from Ka, and you should be able to calculate Ka from pH. Let's start by taking a look at the pH scale. The pH scale is a continuum, so like any continuum, there's no hard and fast cutoffs. But generally speaking, strong acids have a pH of about 1, Strong bases have a pH of about 14. A pH of 7 represents a neutral solution. As you move from pH 7 to pH 1, solutions get more acidic. As you move from pH 7 to pH 14, solutions get more basic. Notice this chart uses the term alkaline. Alkaline is another word for basic. So where does the pH scale come from? Well, the pH scale comes from the relative concentrations of H plus and OH minus in solution. So let's start by looking at water, which can act as an acid or a base. We have a term for solutions like this. They're called amphoteric. Amphoteric substances are substances that can act as an acid or a base. Water is the most common of these. We've already seen this example when we looked at the Brunsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. Sometimes water acted as an acid, sometimes it acted as a base. If you think about water, you can see how this is possible. I've put two water molecules here. When they react with one another, you get H3O+, plus, or H+, plus if you prefer, and OH-. Minus. Notice this is usually associated with acids, the H+. Plus, and this is associated with bases, the OH minus. Since it has both, it can act as either. For pure water, the concentration of H3O plus or H plus will always equal the concentration of OH minus. And that concentration is always 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. Pay particular attention to that seven there. As you may recall, 7 represents a neutral pH. We, might, we can start to see the development of the pH scale right there. If we look at the KEQ for this process, it's actually called the KW since it's the K value for water. We take the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus, each of which again are 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh, and you get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. This is called the KW for water. So what does all this have to do with the pH scale? Well, it turns out that the ion product constant for water, or the KW, is also the value of the H plus concentration times the OH minus concentration for any aqueous solution. So in other words, any aqueous solution will have at least a little bit of H plus or H3O plus and some OH minus. It's the relative amounts of each of those things that determines if the substance is an acid or a base. So if the H plus concentration is equal to the OH minus concentration, it's a neutral solution. If the H plus concentration is greater than the OH minus concentration, it's an acidic solution. And if the H plus concentration is less than the OH minus concentration, it's a basic solution. And remember in every case, H plus concentration is the same as H3O plus concentration. We could just talk about H plus concentration and OH minus concentration for solutions, but because those numbers are really small, it becomes inconvenient. So instead, we invented the pH scale. P is a mathematical operation that just means negative log. So you could take the P of anything and get the negative log of that thing. In this case, if we take the negative log of the H plus concentration, we get the pH. 
If we take the negative log of the OH minus concentration, we get the pOH. And in every case, the pH plus the pOH will equal 14. Let's practice calculating some pHs for different solutions. In the first example, we want the pH of a solution with an H plus concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative third. Therefore, pH will equal the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative third. In this case, that gives you a pH of 3. Make sure you know where the log button is on your calculator. If you have trouble finding that, I can help you with it tomorrow. In the next example, we're again asked for the pH, but this time we're given the OH minus concentration. The easiest way to deal with these problems is to start by finding the pOH, which in this case will be the negative log of 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. This equals 3.58. Since pH plus pOH always equals 14, if we subtract our pOH from 14, we'll be left with the pH, which in this case is 10.42. So here we have a base, whereas up here we had an acid. We can also calculate H plus and OH minus concentration from pH. Here we need to do the opposite of taking the negative log. The inverse operation of negative log is 10 to the negative, or 10 to the negative pH in these cases. So to calculate the H plus concentration in number 4, we're going to take 10 to the negative 2.5, which gives us 3.2 times 10 to the negative third molar H plus. In the next example, again, we're asked for OH minus concentration, but given pH. So again, we can take 14, subtract from that 4.7, and this will give us our pOH, which is 9.3. That's our pOH. From there, we can calculate the OH minus concentration by taking 10 to the negative 9.3, which is going to equal 5.01 times 10 to the negative tenth. So in summary, in order to get from the H plus concentration to the pH, we take the negative log of the H plus concentration. In order to get from pH to H plus concentration, we do 10 to the negative pH. Likewise for OH minus concentration. To pOH is negative log of the OH minus concentration, and pOH to OH minus concentration is 10 to the negative pOH. And finally, you can always get back and forth between pH and pOH by subtracting from 14. Now that we know the relationship between H plus concentration and pH, we can do all kinds of things. One thing we can do is given the Ka, we can solve for the H plus concentration and therefore determine the pH of an acid given its Ka. In order to do this, First, we're going to set up a Ka expression. So since our acid in this case is HF, we're going to start by writing the reaction of HF with water. HF being an acid, we'll donate an H plus to water to give us H3O plus and F minus. Our Ka expression then is the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of F minus over the concentration of HF. Again, do not include water. From here, we can fill in what we know. We know that the Ka equals 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. We also know 
that the concentration of HF is one molar. What we don't know is the concentration of H3O plus or the concentration of F minus. I can call them both X since it's a one-to-one -one ratio. This means that whatever the concentration of H3O plus is, the concentration of F minus is the same. This then simplifies to X squared over one. Now, it's important to notice that technically our denominator isn't really one molar. Since the solution has dissociated a bit, not all of those moles of HF are left undissociated. However, since the acid is so weak, the amount that dissociates is negligible. So once we round based on sig figs, it won't give us a different answer anyway. So essentially, we're making an assumption that allows us to do easier math. It won't affect your answer, so you can just assume that the uh, concentration in the denominator is the same as the concentration before any dissociation. From here, we simply solve for x, which in this case is going to be 2.7 times 10 to the negative second molar. This is equal to the H3O plus concentration. It's of course also equal to the F minus concentration, but since we're looking for the pH, we're not really concerned with that here. And then our last step is to calculate the pH. The pH is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus concentration, which in this case is 2.7 times 10 to the negative second giving us a pH of 1.57, making this a strong acid. We can also go the other way. If we know the concentration and the pH of a solution, we can calculate Ka. We're going to start the same way here, by writing a Ka expression. So first, we need the reaction. We have HBRO plus H2O which yields H3O plus and BRO minus. Our Ka expression will be H3O plus times BRO minus over the concentration of HBRO. From here, we can calculate the H3O plus concentration by using the pH. Since the pH is 4.8, our H3O plus concentration will be equal to 10 to the negative 4.8, or 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. We can then come back up here and plug that in for our H3O plus concentration. And since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we can also plug that in to our, for our a, uh, BRO minus concentration. As for our HBRO, that concentration is going to be 0 0.20. Again, we're making an approximation and assuming that the amount of dissociated acid is negligible compared to the amount of undissociated acid. When we calculate this, we find that our Ka is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative ninth. That brings us to the conclusion of this video. Let's quickly review our goals. First, we said that we were going to understand how pH indicates the relative acidity or basicity of a solution. So we said that substances with a pH less than 7 are acidic and greater than 7 are basic with a pH of 7 representing a neutral solution. We also talked about how acids and bases differ in terms of H plus concentration. Acids have a higher H plus concentration than OH minus concentration, whereas bases have a higher H plus, uh, sorry, a lower H plus concentration than OH minus concentration. And again, neutral solutions have equal H plus and OH minus concentrations. We then learn to calculate H plus and OH minus concentration from pH and pOH. Remember that pH is the negative log 
of the H plus concentration. pOH is the negative log of the OH minus concentration. And H plus concentration is 10 to the negative pH. And OH minus concentration is 10 to the negative pOH. Finally, we looked at how to calculate pH from Ka and Ka from pH, which we'll practice plenty more next class.